Hello. Um, so I just wondered what your process, particularly, I guess, Mesa, but anyone else as well, in terms of the colours that you would choose for the sites and if they're related particularly to the context of the site? Okay. Uh, that's a good question. And <laughs> um, so, for me, it originated with graffiti, as I said, and with that, you know, though you want to bring attention to your piece. And so the basic colour theories with that is you fill in and start, like a certain colour and then you put an outline to your piece, to the letters, and you want that contrast. And so the basic, basic sort of colour theory can tell is hot and cold. And like, just stuff like that. So I learned a lot of colour theory through graffiti and contrasting colours that complemented one another. So when you see all that work that you see now, that I do, it's actually, I've, I've had to like pair it right down. And they're just eight colours plus black and white. And I use those same Pantone references, same RAL colours for all my work, so there's continuity across that. And, and that's enough colour for me, with those eight colours and the black and white, um, it gives me enough variables to compose 35 different variable pattern colours. And then um, I'll use them, and they're very, very processed in their way. Oh, you won't ever see me use sort of natural grass green colours or that because it needs to be contrasting to its environment a lot of it's outdoors so that's pretty much it I try to pair it right back then to some because there's so much confusion already where like you know having to think of stuff when you're coordinating these big projects that I have that locked down and it's a PDF that then I can share because some of these projects as well they might need to you know you need to put in paint orders before I get there if I'm scratching my head for a few days what if I change the colour or whatnot it'll delay the process so uh, for me, that's how it works, and then, um, and I think that's just through experience as well, seeing how they work in the environment. Each piece is different, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's that, that's my process behind it anyway for color theory with those pieces. You kind of touched on this earlier. I didn't know if you wanted to elaborate on kind of really why you use black and white more as opposed to color. Mainly because it's just easy to get. That. Also, I think. Because I've gone from using, perm like I was always using permanent markers and then got into brushwork because I developed RSI, not surprisingly. And just using black, I'm focusing more on, on the mark making. So maybe colour will develop as I introduce it, but I've sort of become a bit focused on this mark making. Cool. So colour. And there's people like you doing it so well, it's like, it sort of makes me sort of like colour. Maybe when I get to confidence. Okay. Oh, there could be a collaboration in the pipeworks. Uh, we got any other questions? Now we're warming up now. All right, down here. We're keeping you fit. Um, I want to ask RJ um, about the dissidence to decoration, which I actually completely agree upon. But what I want to ask you is, in a world where you are just swiping mural after mural after mural after mural after mural, and don't get me wrong, I'm part of that fucking fuck up, I totally admit it, but how on earth do we combat it and how do we get to a point where the quality control of this, this art form has some kind of substance, which I think, as a practitioner, it's completely losing. I think that's a great question. It's something that I still struggle with. It's something I've struggled with on every mural project that I've been involved with in any capacity. Um, I think there, there are examples. Michelle Ortiz is a good one. Uh, the piece that I showed, that piece went fairly viral. Hyperallergic did a post about it. I saw a lot of people posting on social media about it because it was an easy image to reshare. Uh, maybe it's because I like to write and talk. I fall back on text art a lot. Um, but. Uh, you can also, Jesse and Katie, another good one, where that was a mostly abstract piece that also was crazy on social media because they used a drone to photograph it, right? Um, but had, had something behind it. And a lot of people who saw those things maybe didn't know the whole story, and that's a bummer, but they can, you know, if you're really interested, you can go and engage, and hopefully you do. And even if you don't, there was still something positive going on behind the scenes. You know, I think what it boils down to, though, is, um, you know, a lot, some of us like to watch reality TV and some of us like to watch, I don't know, what's the C-SPAN equivalent here, the BBC, you know, uh, Parliament, right? And then there's a lot in between. And uh, 
there is demand for even just watching people go crazy in Parliament on the BBC rather than reality TV. And maybe we should, you know, watch a little more of that or a little more of interesting, you know, even Game of Thrones and a little less Kim Kardashian. I don't know why I'm picking on Kanye and, and Kim today. Do, who, who, do you, who do you think takes on the responsibility for this quality control? Is it the artist, the people throwing the festival, or wh where does it lie? You know, it's, it's a little bit with everybody. It's with the funders, right? I mean, we talked a little earlier about what are useful funding structures and what are funding structures that are going to lead you more towards purely decorative work. Um, it can also lie with the curator. Uh, Jeffrey Deitch, again, is a really good example where even within this very decorative project at Coney Island, and it, mind you, a very controversial project in terms of its associations with development uh, and real estate there, he's bringing in really great artists, right? And bringing in artists who care about the history and who are, are perhaps more, uh, there's a little bit more going on there, even in this very uh, ostensibly decorative project. Um, but it's also with the artists, right? So we can choose artists, but you know, as a curator, I could choose artists and say, I want to work with this person, this person, this person. But I don't know, Remy, if you came to me and said, I want to do the easy example to fall back on is working with kids. If you said, I want to do something with you know, art education and spend a month teaching kids and having them help me paint my mural, you go, oh, that's a different way to you know, look at your work. But it's also expensive, and you've never asked me. <laughs> cool, we got a question? Just there. Um, my question is for the artists. When you start off as an artist, you've got ideas that you work with. And I suppose as your career develops, uh, you become more popular and people support you. And you have more means to be able to achieve your visions and what it is that you want to do. Um, what, how do you see, like, if you didn't have any of that, how your careers would have developed? You know, I mean, you can build a house, you can stretch um, a nine meter canvas. But if you are just sort of a starting out artist and those doors had never opened up for you, do you feel that your work would have been contained to some degree? Um, so yeah, I was that. I was that my whole life. That's all I do, I struggle and don't think, yeah, you, we build houses, but I'm not getting that money. You know, it's like I get an artist fee for it and uh, I, yeah, I'm lucky to be in a position where people want me to do that stuff, but um, yeah, like I've, I've struggled my whole life and it's great to be able to be in a position there where you can choose projects and people f facilitate that in some way, but you know, that's, it's, it's hard to explain, but like, you know, I'm still a struggling artist in comparison to another artist, you know, in the context of that, you know, like I have, I'm driven and I'm dr and so if let's say there wasn't funding or there wasn't that, I'd be still doing what I'm doing. I'm still out painting every day. Like when I did graffiti, no one paid me money. I robbed my paint. I slept on cages for years and I still did it and I was motivated and that's just something inherently built into us that the money has no real aspect of it or the funding. You're still going to do it and you know, the ribbon installations, like those are the most cheapest way of doing it and I use wood and paint and then it just grew and then people saw that and then went on to doing bigger ones in galleries. So it's just a natural sort of progression, I think. And I hope to be doing bigger, bigger projects, you know, and take over fucking city. I don't know, just like, I don't know what it is yet. And I don't question it too much, as I said earlier, I'm just going to motion and I have this idea and I know it and then maybe something come in or I'm in a location, like, okay, I can do that there now. And, you know, it's a lot of your subconscious just sort of getting aligned at one time and it just happens, so. That's for me anyway, that's how I see it. But it's a good question, I need to think, think more about it. But I think it sounds like we've got there in the Yeah, I don't know, it's like going to the gym, you have this mode, and uh, you know, I want my six pack, you're like, and we're going to look ripped. You know, it's like, whatever it is, like, I don't know. But yeah, you can see that and that's great. And I, yeah, I look back and I'm very appreciative every day of what I do and the, and the position I'm in, but I'm driven to do more. and and affect people more in my work and have that interaction I'm saying and let people take ownership of this space that we share and to empower them even down to the process of building it and you know it's just a constant conversation that's gonna keep going for me and like if I find the answer I think I'll end up stopping so yeah. did you want to say anything on that one Lucy? well just I agree with it because if if you want to do something like that you will make a wave 
over that. So like with the large canvases, I could have equally chosen just some cheap cloth and tried to do something myself. Maybe the results might have been more interesting because you would fa face more twists and turns along the road. But I think, yeah, if you really want to do something, you make it happen in some form or other. We've got a question? Back. So what do you guys feel about kind of mural projects that are going in places like, you know, there's Dubai walls is now springing up and of course that hasn't really seen a, any form of a grassroots culture there. How do you then kind of make it work to benefit that grassroots artistic community? And do you see some doing it, some don't? I'm just kind of aiming that more at RJ for the experience, I guess, with looking at mural projects. Yeah, uh, so I, for a long time, was working with a project for about two years in uh, New York called the Lisa Project uh, in Little Italy. And that was interesting because it was, it was basically, it was like Coney Island, it was a tourist project. We wanted to attract tourists and New Yorkers to Little Italy to buy cannolis. Um, and it was really fun, and there are some amazing murals. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't very socially engaged. It wasn't engaged, for the most part, with the people in the neighborhood. Occasionally, a mural would pop up that you know, referenced a guy who was a chef at the restaurant or something like that. But um, you know, that, those two years really taught me, like, wow, we're not engaging. We're not even really, once we have permission for a wall, talking to anybody who's inside, which bit us on the ass a couple of times. Um, we. And, and then I started working with these, these guys in Philadelphia, the mural arts program, which was kind of the exact opposite end of the spectrum. And you know, we can critique community murals that are just kids holding hands painted by local artists and talk about why maybe that's not what every wall should be either. But you know, there, there are people in the middle somewhere um, that, are, that are doing good work. That project in Manchester, and I'm blanking on the name of it right now, is a good example. City of Hope. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, think, I, I love that they're experimenting and trying, trying to answer that question, right? Mm. I don't think there is like an easy, obvious answer. Although I will say, like, I'm much more interested in Cities of Hope than in uh, the Dubai art walls or even, you know, I... That was really good. refreshing for the UK scene, actually. I think that, that, that whole project, I think that the way that they got behind it and the way that they went in with it was, it was done really well. Yeah, I mean, I think the one thing that any conference or any... Um, festival should be doing that a lot don't if you can't provide that community engagement because really you are just there to have some people paint some wallpaper and sometimes that's what you got to do and that is that can be useful is pay your artists right and I think Dubai does pay artists um, and like I said Coney Island pays its artists so that's great a lot of these projects don't though and that's that's what gets worrisome for me because somebody like Jess Chen who's already you know she's just starting out and she's you know, trying to paint murals, and maybe she doesn't have a gallery career where she can be, you know, selling her work in galleries. Painting for exposure doesn't really do that do that much for her, um, and it doesn't do a lot for a lot of artists. Um, so I think, at a very base level, pay your artists. <laughs> Going back, I guess, then just quickly jumping in. Um, you know, you, you touched on this earlier, the, the, I guess the representation of, of backgrounds in, in this art world, I mean, whether it's on the street or in the gallery, it does seem to be very, I mean, the street art scene, especially over years, I mean, going back to the origins of graph, you know, it was, it was straight white guys. How does that change? So I'll ask the panel of straight white people. <laughs> Yeah, how do you how do you get the momentum to open this movement up more for more of a broad representation? I mean, you touched on this earlier, and when you played that audio, I think it really tapped into something. I don't know if you guys want to touch on this first. I or? don't know. I can just say that you know we're we're right in the middle of it. Um, when you're talking about these mural festivals and stuff that happen, this is all new, you know. It's, and uh, so. We don't really have the answers for it yet. I think like in another few years, we'll sort of see it as more of a structure come, but like it is a bit of a shit storm. Like everyone's just doing this and everything and that. And I'm going to places and painting murals just because it's good exposure at a certain level, but then it's also a great experience. I get to go to Las Vegas and I get to paint and that's what I love to do. And uh, 
So yeah, you know, there's just a lot of gun smoke at the moment. Everyone's shooting guns. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> sometimes, you know, that'll clear and we'll stand up on the hill and we'll look down and then we'll sort of, there'll be more clarity and people will rise from that. And, you know, but yeah, it's a very transient time right now. And I think it's great, you know, that this, there's recognition hmm. for us uh, in that way. And I'm only speaking as an artist, like to yeah. get that opportunity. Because as I said, years ago, we just would buy a, you know, an interrail ticket and you just go across Europe and just eating, flipping whatever, packs of crisps every day just to get going and just salvaging your paint. So you sort of feel bad as well when you're like literally sitting on stage on there as people wanting to listen to you talk about what you, what you do. But I think in time, yeah, it'll all transpire. Cool. I like that. And that's a positive kind of way to finish it. So uh, I think that is it for this bit. So can you guys please put your hands together one more time for Lucy, Macer and RJ.